Hello and welcome to Keenan Keys. The MIDI part in my Yamaha PSSA50 review was perhaps a bit too short, cause above all I wanted to show what you can do with a keyboard alone. But MIDI offers a lot more possibilities. And since I believe that this keyboard is mainly used by beginners who are not so familiar with MIDI, I thought it could be helpful to make a video to explain what MIDI is, how to connect the PSSA50 to your computer and make multi-track MIDI recordings, use it as a controller for virtual instruments, and because that question came up a lot of times, not only regarding the PSSA50, how to make audio recordings. So what is MIDI? MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, but it's not a digital audio interface. It's the standard interface to exchange control messages between two or more electronic instruments and was introduced in the early 80s. The old MIDI interface has these five pin connectors, normally one output and one input, and for professional instruments also a MIDI through. You can use it to play two synthesizers at the same time by simply connecting the MIDI output of one synthesizer to the MIDI input of another. MIDI only transmits data on how something is played, what key is pressed, that message is called note on, and when it's released, that's called note off. It's basically that simple. And that's what the first MIDI interfaces could do. Of course, it didn't stay at that level. For example, many keyboards also transmit how fast a key was pressed. That's called velocity, and it's normally used to control volume. You may have heard of it as touch sensitivity. And there's a whole set of MIDI commands for volume, panning, pitch band, modulation, sustain, program change, and so on. And that's why all the MIDI master keyboards have a bunch of assignable knobs. You can connect several devices in a row. That's what MIDI through is for. It passes the incoming messages directly to the next device. And the best thing is, it's also possible to record and playback the MIDI messages with a sequencer. But this wouldn't be very effective if all the connected devices played the same. That's why MIDI supports up to 16 channels. Select a MIDI receive channel for each instrument and you can play several devices one by one by changing the transmit channel on the master keyboard. Or use a sequencer to play all the instruments simultaneously. Most of the people use a computer and a sequencer software to do this. That's why the standard MIDI interface changed into a USB MIDI interface. But you can still find the old connectors on professional equipment. The PSSA50 has such a USB MIDI interface. It has three functions, power supply, MIDI in and out. And you only need one cable for that. The only drawback is that you cannot connect it directly to other USB or standard MIDI devices. It only works with a computer. But then you can use the PSSA50 to build your own little MIDI home studio. Cause it can act as a master keyboard and it's a so-called multi timbral device. It can play back 16 of its voices at the same time. You only need a MIDI recording program. And the best thing is, you can get one for free. These programs are called Digital Audio Workstations, short DAW or DAW. They can handle MIDI and audio as well. There are some nice freeware DAWs on the market, like Waveform Free, Soundbridge, Cakewalk by BandLab, and a couple more. You will find a link in the description. All these programs will do a good job, and the PSSA50 should work fine with every program that can handle MIDI. I will try Cakewalk. Unfortunately, it's for Windows only. Download and run the assistant. You will have to create an account. After that, you can log in and install the software. Before you start the program, connect your PSSA50 and turn it on. No drivers necessary. I've tried it with Windows 7 and 10 and my Android phone, but it should also work with Mac and iPad. If you have any problems, you should download the standard USB MIDI driver from the Yamaha website. Turn off Auto Power Off. So it's not automatically switched off while Cakewalk is running. Otherwise, you would have to restart the program. Now start Cakewalk and open an empty project. This may look a bit complicated at first, but the basic functions are easy to learn. Open the preferences. Don't worry about audio right now. You don't need an audio device to run the program. And first I'm going to show you what you can do with the sounds of the PSSA50 only. Go to MIDI Devices, 
and select Digital Keyboard, this is the PSSA50, for In and Output. Create a MIDI track by right-clicking on this area. Don't mix up MIDI track and MIDI channel. A MIDI track can record and playback MIDI data, and it can contain data for several or all MIDI channels. You can leave the input at Omni. That means this track receives on all MIDI channels. Set the output to Digital Keyboard. You see some activity on the meters. But what happens is, you hear a flanging effect. Because the sound is generated twice. Once directly while you are playing, and a second time after the MIDI messages have been routed to the computer and back to the keyboard. To avoid this, press Shift and Local Off. That way only the MIDI messages coming back from the computer generate a sound. So now we could say we are in MIDI mode. Well, it doesn't feel like that, because you can do everything like before. Change the sound, use sustain, portamento, motion effects and the arpeggiator. Select another sound to play along to the arpeggio and playback a phrase recording. But there is a big difference. Now all this data is transmitted to the computer and you can record it. This alone would be quite useful. All these different parts, the manual played voice, the arpeggio and the two voices of the phrase recording, are transmitted on separate MIDI channels and could also be recorded on four separate tracks. But there is a much better way to make recordings. As I said, the PSSA50 is a multi-timbral device. That means it can play more than one voice at a time. You've already heard that it can play four voices at a time. But actually, it can play 16 voices at the same time. Think of it as 16 synthesizers in one box. And each of these synthesizers, I'll call them parts, can be addressed on a separate MIDI channel. Press Shift and change the MIDI Out channel to play one of these parts. On the first four channels we hear the voices that were just used in the small demonstration. All other parts are still set to piano by default. Except the one that receives on channel 10, which is set to drums. But there is a better way to select one of the 16 parts. Choose the corresponding MIDI channel over here, in the track inspector. Because now it doesn't matter which channel the incoming or recorded MIDI data has. All data will be transmitted back to the PSSA50 on channel 10 and we hear the drums. So let's start with that. But I will save the project first. Name the track. It might be better to set up a metronome before we start recording. Click on the metronome icon. If you have no audio device installed, you can use MIDI. The click will be transmitted on channel 10. And this note will play a hi-hat. That's okay but most of the times you will use a hi-hat while recording a beat. So it may be better to use a different percussion sound. Let's say the cowbell on G sharp 4. We only need it during recording. And one measure count in will be enough. Arm the track. And click on record. Well, this sounds like a second try, and if this was an audio recording, I would definitely do so. Double click on the object. This is the piano roll editor, where you can see all MIDI notes as bars. You can add or delete a note, change the volume, or the timing, or quantize all notes to the grid. Much better. Of course you can change the overall tempo. And most important, you can change the sound. You can still use the voice buttons as usual. It seems obvious, but it only works because the buttons are transmitting so-called program change commands. Well, there's no standard term for the designation of sounds on a keyboard or synthesizer. On the PSSA50 they are called voices. But on other devices, they might be called tones, instruments, patches, presets or programs. In terms of MIDI, a sound change command is usually called program change. So take care that program change is not turned off on the PSSA50. Let's create another track. We need a bass. Select the channel, 
one for example, and choose a bass sound. Arm the track and record. Works fine. But the voice or program changes are only temporary and not stored within your project. You could record them at the beginning of each track, but that's not very convenient. A better way is to use the track inspector again. In the third row, marked with a P, you can select the voice. These are the 128 standard general MIDI sounds. The PSSA50 does not have that much voices, and some names are different. When you choose one that doesn't exist on the PSSA50, you will hear nothing. The voices and their corresponding numbers are listed in the manual. You could type in the number. The numbers do not fit exactly. They must be smaller by one. Synth bass is 38, not 39. This works quite okay, if you have the manual at hand. But it's possible to create a list that fits the PSSA50. Go to Preferences, MIDI Instruments, Define, and add an instrument definition. Create a new patch names list. And add all the voices from the manual. Use the number written in the manual minus one. So grand piano is zero. Electric piano one is four and so on. It takes a minute, but you only have to do it once. Drag and drop the list over here. Click OK. Finally, you have to assign all 16 input channels to your new instrument definition. Now it's much easier to select a voice, and the settings will be stored within your project. Since it is the main feature of the PSSA50, we should record an Apache. Create a track, name it, select the channel, and choose a voice. Select an Apache. You will have to adjust the tempo of the Apeggio to the tempo of your project. Now record it. By the way, this button is for monitoring. It's automatically activated for the selected track, and it ensures that you don't play two parts at the same time. But you could manually select it on another track if you like to do so. Now you can easily try out different sounds for the Apeggio. This isn't possible with the PSSA50 on its own. You can add motion effects, sustain and portamento. Everything will be recorded. But you don't have to do it at the same time. Just start the recording again. The type of commands these buttons are transmitting are called control changes. You can edit them down here. And we see the motion effects button has transmitted a mix of different control changes for channel 1 and 2. Pitch band sensitivity, wheel, which is pitch band, control change 74 for cutoff. 72 was transmitted by the sustain switch and is actually for release. 71 is resonance. Expression, which is another volume control, and modulation. Some of these control changes are for resetting purposes, to make sure that the voice sounds the same again after using the effect. By the way, the voice buttons also transmit default values for volume, reverb, and chorus, so it's better to turn off control change before you record a program change, which would be necessary if you want to change the voice in the middle of a track. But it's not so important why these control changes are transmitted. Just keep in mind that they are transmitted. Because they might get in your way if you start to edit these control changes manually. Which you can do right here. Delete the existing curve. Also the copy for channel 2. And draw a new one. But there is an easier way to add some effects. The automation lanes. Choose a parameter from the menu. Click on MIDI for some more. This is a set of control changes which work with most MIDI devices. The PSSA50 cannot receive all of them, but it can receive some that are not listed here. You can see a full list in the MIDI manual, which is available on the Yamaha website. You can type in the corresponding number, 71 for resonance for example, 
or create a new list in the preferences. Go to MIDI Instruments, Define, and add a new list. I've already done that. It doesn't take much time. Drag and drop the list to the PSSA50 folder. Now you can easily create an automation envelope for each of these parameters. Cutoff, for example. To edit the envelope, simply click on the line to create a so-called node and drag it wherever you want. Maybe one more for resonance. There might come a time when your song is finished and you want to take it out into the world. You could export your song as a MIDI file. This is a single file that contains all your recordings, channel settings, program and control changes. Go to Export and Standard MIDI File. And you're done. For playback, you can use the standard media player of your computer, for example. Of course, that wouldn't be exactly the same. So you need to make an audio recording of your song. There's just a headphone jack, which provides an analog audio signal. You will need a device that converts your analog audio into a digital audio signal, an AD converter. And you will need a DA converter for playback. These are included in an audio interface or sound card. A lot of computers already have a kind of sound card on board. But in most cases, the sound quality will not be very satisfying. You can try it out. Maybe it's good enough. If not, consider buying a USB audio interface. These are available in almost every price range and with different functions. I recommend thinking about what else you might use it for in the future. If you don't want to record a whole band, two inputs and outputs should be enough. If you also want to record your voice, you should buy one with a mic input. If you are planning on buying some old MIDI keyboards, you will also need MIDI in and outputs. Once it is installed, open the audio preferences and select it. Connect the output to the line input of your interface. It doesn't matter if you use a mono cable or a stereo split cable, because although this is a stereo output, the signal is the same on the left and right channel. Create an audio track and select the input. I have connected a stereo cable, so I choose stereo. Arm the track and click on record. When the recording is finished, solo the track and export it as an mp3 for example. This just takes a second. However, all DAWs come with a bunch of audio plugins, like EQ, compressor, reverb, delay and so on. So if you want to tweak the sound a bit, it's better to record the tracks one by one. And it also might be the case that you have reached the limit of the 32 note polyphony, so that some notes are cut off or don't sound at all when all 16 parts play at the same time. Create an audio track for each MIDI track. This time select the left channel so the tracks will be mono. Name the first track. Arm it and solo the corresponding MIDI track. I prefer to record without reverb. If the signal is not loud enough, you should first turn up the volume on the PSSA50 and in the track inspector, cause the output is a little bit noisy. If you just turn up the input gain of your audio interface, you will turn up the noise as well. And although the noise isn't too bad, it will add up if you record multiple tracks. I have copied the drum pattern four times, so I will only record it once. And copy it again. Do the same with the other MIDI tracks. By the way, you don't have to record all the drum and percussion instruments on a single track. I've created an extra track for woodblock, so I can place it somewhere else in the stereo image.
Now you have a lot more mixing options. Pan automation, for example. That wasn't possible before. Open the mixer. Here you can adjust volume, pan, add an EQ or insert an effect plugin. Or create an effect bus. For reverb, for example. This way the effect is available on each of the tracks. Turn down the dry signal. might need a stereo chorus. And a bit delay for the lead. Ping pong could be nice. These are just some rough pre-adjustments. But once your mix is finished, you can export it as a stereo wave file, mp3, or whatever you need. But you're not limited to use the sounds of the PSSA50 only. More interesting are perhaps the software instruments. And there's so much freeware out there that you could spend weeks trying it out. But you will also need an audio interface to do this. At least one with an output. Cause although we are dealing with MIDI again, you would probably like to hear what you're playing. An input is not necessary. Loading a software instrument just takes a second. Create an instrument track and select an instrument. This DAW comes with just one instrument. Load it and it's immediately ready to play. Click on the little instrument icon and select a voice from the menu. That's it. Since this is a general MIDI sound generator, you can also use the voice, motion effects and sustain buttons. Now you can make a recording, create another track with the same or another software instrument and build up your song. You can create as much instrument tracks as your CPU can handle. When your song is finished, simply click on export. There's no need to make audio recordings for each track. And that's basically how it works with every software instrument. You don't necessarily need to know more about it. But this is also a multi timbral device, and you could use it just like the tone generator of the PSSA50. Create a MIDI track, select the instrument, and select the channel. You don't have to select a preset, cause the settings of the software instrument will be stored within the project. Create another track, select another channel, and so on. Now you could make recordings like I've shown you before. And it would be similar with any other multi timbral instrument. But I prefer to use one instrument per track. Doesn't matter if multi timbral or not. Of course, this takes more CPU power. But that way I can almost forget about MIDI channels and tweak each track separately with audio effects. I will show you something else the Surrealistic MG1 Plus, an emulation of the Realistic MG1, the first synthesizer sold by Radio Shack. But it was actually made by Moog. Install it to your VST folder. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology. It's a software interface for audio plugins of all kinds. You can create a VST folder wherever you want. Install the plugin to that folder, go to Preferences, VST Settings, and add your VST folder to the list. Now you can load it. select some patches with the voice buttons, but since this is not a general MIDI device, the selection is rather random. A lot of VST instruments allow to assign MIDI control changes to the different parameters. This one also does. Right click on a parameter, cutoff for example, click on MIDI learn, and press the motion effects button. But remember, the button transmits a mix of control changes.
It's working, but we don't know which control change was assigned to this parameter. It seems to be the wrong one, because cutoff only jumps back and forth between two values. Therefore, we have to enter the right control change manually. Fortunately, it's possible, which is not the case with every VST instrument. Open the MIDI settings and change it to 74. If you are not sure which control change you need, simply record the effect and open the event list. This is another editor where you can easily add and delete single MIDI events. Control change 74 seems to be the right one. All others have only two values at the beginning and end. You can also use this recording if your software instrument has a MIDI learn mode but doesn't allow manual changes. I will try 71 for resonance. Simply delete all other events and play the recording while the instrument is waiting for a control change. You can adjust the maximum and minimum value if the effect is a bit too strong. Cutoff and resonance jump back to a certain value after using the effect, because the effects are optimized for the sounds of the PSSA 50. Try out some other motion effects. For example, C7. This features the control change 11. Assign it to noise. You are not limited to assign one parameter per control change. And you can also use the keys. But there is something strange going on. Although this knob isn't assigned to a MIDI control change, it always jumps to the left. So everything is transposed three half steps down. I don't know what it is, and it doesn't do that in my other door. But anyway, the most fun is to try out the arpeggios. You will get quite different results. <laughs> The PSSA50 does quite well as a MIDI controller. Of course, it's not perfect. But considering that it was mainly designed for standalone operation, it does a good job. It doesn't take much space on my desk, and I can leave it there all the time if I want to. When I'm on the road, I can connect it to my laptop and don't necessarily need an audio interface to make some recordings. And I don't even need a laptop, because it also works with my cell phone. I bought this small USB adapter, and it seems to work well. But I've only tried it with Cubase's LE so far, which is a free version with limited functions. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching.